help! I can't find my part! That's something you might run into if you are working dynamically in a um, CAD program and you create an STL file that you want to use in Kanban. Or it's something you may run into if you're getting an STL or other geometry file from a customer. So, as you can see, we've imported our part here. It's either really, really tiny, or it's invisible, or we can't find it. So, here's a little trick. Press the Alt key on your keyboard and double left click your uh, screen. And now you have the part there. What you're looking at is that CAMBAM has taken all physical geometry items and fit them within the viewable screen. And you're looking at it in the top down orientation, like you're looking down on the Z axis with your X and Y below you, you know, in two dimensions. Now we don't know where this part is or what its orientation is. Well, we do know what its orientation is. This side is faced to the positive direction, the side that we can see. So, but we can see that our working grid isn't even visible on the screen, so we could zoom out until the grid appears and we can see it's lost out there in space away from our normal working area. What I would normally do at this point is hit is select the item or multiple items if I've imported multiple items and hit transform align and I would center on X and Y just to bring it into the the uh, primary working area basically the part will be centered at for its overall extents at 0x and 0y. So we hit that. As you see it moved or it disappeared from this screen. So let's close this for the moment and we'll hit the Alt key and then double left click and there it is. And we can zoom out a little bit and we got an idea what the scale and the orientation is. And then we can press the Alt key and the left arrow key and rotate the view. And we can see that it's well above the uh, zero plane. And I tend to work on parts um, below the at or below the zero plane. So let's hit transform, align, and we'll we don't need to do those again or we may have moved it for some other reason. And we'll hit upper for Z. And now we can see that the part is, let's zoom out a little, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or you can hit minus 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 or plus 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 on the keyboard to zoom in and out and now we can get a look at it and we see we have the part upside down alright and cause see the top is labeled so what we can do at this point is go select it and come over here to this screen and you'll see this where it says transform click on that and then click on the three little dots and you hit rotation see our rotation is already selected the other options are scale which you can make it bigger or smaller or translation which you can move it uh, by a fixed amount but right now we're going to rotate it about the y-axis 180 degrees click apply and then click OK and now we've oriented it top side up but as you can see it's above the work plane so we can just hit transform align upper oh we gotta select the part first okay now it's below the work plane and what that'll mean is that the highest po point of the part as you see it just touches z equals zero at this point now if you want to remove a little bit of material to make sure that you get good machining in your part, you could move it down a little bit. You can hit transform. Oh, over here you can hit transform. And then you can hit translation and Z and minus point zero one. Apply. That gives you ten thousandths or a hundredth of an inch of clearance when you click OK. If you look at it closely you'll see that now it's just below the work plane and if we want a good reference and by the way don't be afraid to just draw stuff for for reference if you need to just so you can see stuff okay we just drew a line across there we'll 
and that's on the zero plane and we can see that the part is now just below zero. The very top of the part is just below zero. So if we were working with a piece of stock to make this part, we could uh, program it as stock surface equals zero and then apply our machining operations. That's the basic, help, I can't find my part, um, or help, my part is upside down kind of thing that you can do. And so far I haven't used any plugins, although there's a massive plugin library available from uh, Kanban users who've developed their own tools and utilities. But in order to do this, I haven't used any of those. This is all just inbuilt features within Kanban to get to this point. Now, what we have here is an STL surface file. And uh, basically an STL file is a group of triangles. I guess there's a type of STL file that's a group of squares that uh, are just put together edge to edge to approximate the surface of your solid model part if you were to make it. And sometimes that's all we need. We could use a 3D operation and machine this whole part. Um, but maybe we want to know where the edges of part are to do various other operations or to do 2D operations or something like that. One of the quickest and easiest tools we can use is, is to select the part and let's create a new layer just to help keep track of stuff and we'll just we'll call this edges. Okay, let's select the part, hit edit, surface, edge detect. Alright, now we'll go over here to the overall layout and we'll delete that, or not delete it, we didn't delete it. When we when you press the space bar on a layer, it just hides that whatever's on that layer. Okay? Hitting the space bar. Alright? Now we know where all of the edges are. Those are all of the hard edges. It didn't give you anything to represent the curves or the, the places where there weren't hard edges, but now you have all of the known hard edges. Well, the more complex part with organic surfaces, this might not be so easy, but for a basic part like this, this gives you most of what you might need to make this part, or to help make this part. Um, the next thing you might want is an overall silhouette, and so we're gonna, or an overall outline. So we're going to create a new layer, and we'll call it outline. And it kind of makes working easier if you separate different types of geometry and different features of your part onto uh, different layers. So we'll hit, we'll select the surface. It's still there, it's just hidden. And we'll hit Edit, Surface, Silhouette. And we may get multiple silhouettes, but hopefully we'll get one that, that does the job. And let's hide the edges and see what we get here. All right, it looks like we got a silhouette of the overall outline of the part here and then we got a silhouette at the one inch mark here. So let's delete all of this and we'll kind of explain what happens. Okay, we're just going to delete. Alright, we'll select our surface. See, there it is. It's still there. It's just hidden. And we'll select that and we'll hit Edit, Surface, Silhouette. And right here it says Slice Width. That's how often through the part it's going to give you a silhouette of the part. Like if we put 0.25 every quarter of an inch from the top down, it's going to calculate a silhouette of the part. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and hide that. And as you can see, we've got multiple silhouettes of the part. That may be useful in some circumstances, like for instance, if you want to rough out a 3D organic pocket uh, using 3D methods, uh, like maybe for a mold cavity. Um, let's get control Z and control Z and maybe that's all we need is an overall outline of the whole part so we can hit edit surface silhouette and we know the parts say thicker than three inches so we put three and we hit OK and it should just give us a single overall outside silhouette of the part and let's go ahead and hide that and that's exactly what we got now that's going to be down at the bottom of the part, which doesn't matter for a lot of things. But say if we do an engraving operation, we might want it to be located elsewhere. So we can take a look at the transformation matrix. You remember that? And right here we can hit scale. We can do a couple of things. We can hit scale equals zero. 
okay, and that would zero the z dimension of all of that, uh, and this number would change to zero, and then, or the other way to do it is with what the tool I already showed you. Hit a line, none and none for x and y, because we want it to stay oriented to our to our uh, solid model or our STL model, our surface model, but we might hit center or upper or lower since it's one dimen since it's flat in Z, but center is good. Hit apply, and now if we look at it, you'll see that that our outline is set at Z zero, and so now if we show everything, um, we've got an overall outline. And then at and then we've got edges that we found with the edge detect. Let's hide our our uh, STL solid model or our STL surface model. Now we've got edges for everything that we can work from. You know, so you've got quite a lot to work from there. And then of course, if you you can always draw extra 2D geometry to help with the job. Okay, for instance, if we wanted to machine this bump right here, well we right we want to machine this part and we just want to machine this bump uh, we could create we can machine it and set that as the limit but it won't machine all the way to this surface it'll just machine that part within that limit so we could create an extra uh, piece of geometry there edit offset and say if we're using a uh, want to finish it with a uh, 1 32nd inch end mill we might go uh, 0 0.015625 polyline offset now alt 3 or alt and our new polyline is now a 32nd of an inch around the bump so we could machine that bump using with a 32nd inch end mill using this as our boundary and if we were to machine this surface with another tool we might use let's hide this for a second so we can see everything clearly we might use this one as the bound as, as an inner boundary and this one as an outer boundary we might even convert them to a region and we'll get into more complex stuff like that if necessary but I think this should be a good start for help I can't find my part and, and help it doesn't have any edges